you, you join me here. I'm up at this moment in time in the middle of uh, the Crumlin Road. We're in the Crumlin Star Social Club. As you can hear, there's massive noise behind me here. We're all here today uh, for one reason, one reason only. Eamon McCauley, one of our Down's most uh, successful and most loved boxing sporting sons, is launching his book today. It's an absolutely fantastic occasion. You can hear there's lots of noise coming from the people behind me here. Lots of support for this uh, day, which is Eamon's day, which he's looked forward to for so much. Now, Eamon had a glittering boxing career, an amateur boxing career, been the only uh, Irish fighter to go to the middle of the heat of the cauldron, in the middle of Wembley, and lift an ABA title. That was some feat. So we're here today and I'm going to be collecting some highlights for you. I'm also going to be making sure that I get a bit of interview and a bit of chat with some of the more famous names in Irish boxing from Ulster. But mainly, we're here for Eamon McCauley's big day and it's the book launch of Fighting to Find Peace. Good afternoon everybody, welcome here to the Common Star for the launch of Eamon's book. My name is Barry Flynn, uh, I'm a friend of Eamon's. I'm very proud to say today that I am a friend of Eamon's because I think it's a monumental occasion, not only for Eamon, it's for the people of Ardoy, the people of Belfast, the people of Ireland, that today we're here to launch Eamon's book. Now, I'm going to say a couple of things. The first thing I'm going to say is that um, reading through the book, there's more black eyes and uh, punches and uh, fights and everything in it. Actually, I felt very sore after reading the book, okay? And the second thing I will say to you is this. There's a film doing the rounds called Belfast at present. If you really want to know what Belfast was like between the years 1966 and now, it's encapsulated in this book because this book is not just a story about Eamon. It's a story about his father. It's a story about Eamon's struggles. It's a story about boxing. It's a story about Belfast, and it's a story about Ardoyne. So, give him a round of applause for those of you who are here In the book, Eamon speaks very lovingly about his father, a very well-known character, Coco, Patsy Coco Macaulay. And he has documented in this book some of the things that his father did and why his father was famous. But let's just say, he was a hard man in Belfast. He really was a hard man, but he was a, a fair man. And I remember when his father died in 2014, 13? Um, Eamon asked me to do a piece in the Irish News, uh, do Remembrance Page, which was on a Saturday. And it was a great pri privilege for me to write. And one of the things that I found out about um, Patsy McCauley was that he, was, he got a, a Queen's Award in 1974 because he jumped into the river Lagan to save a woman who was trying to take her own life. And he got this award, and uh, afterwards, yes, there it is there, you can see it in the background. Afterwards, the, the woman who he saved was so annoyed that she attacked him with his umbrella. So you're saying to yourself, such is life. You try and do a good thing for someone, you get an award from the queen for what you've done, but nobody gives you any thanks in life, okay? That went into the book, and the other day I was going through the Belfast Telegraph for 1974, and we discovered the picture on the front page. Eamon had been looking for it for years down in the Central Library. But do you remember the Telegraph used to have like all the different versions, and everybody wanted the sixth telly, which was the later one, which was the most up-to-date? Well, this picture only appeared in the sixth telly, and I found it online. And it's an absolute privilege. I'm going to get it printed out and framed so you can put it in the house. It's, it's Patsy getting the award along with Eamon's mum in their, in their house way back in 1974, which shows the goodness that Patsy McCauley had at heart. But I'm going to talk about Eamon. I met him about 10 years ago. He approached um, Alex Maskey. Eamon's great uncle was Rinty Monaghan. Now, talk about a boxing pedigree. My goodness, you couldn't get any better within uh, Belfast for being a relative of Rinty Monaghan. He approached Alex and he says, we need to do something. We need to celebrate a man, Rinty Monaghan, a boxer from humble origins who brought pride to this city. Because, I'm gonna say this, you've heard it before, and if you think the people of Belfast own Belfast, they don't. It's owned by the Chichesters and the Salisbury's and the Shaftesbury's and the Donegal's. They wouldn't name anything 
after a working class hero. So we fought and fought and fought and Eamon led the Belfast boxing ring and eventually we got the money. And not only did we celebrate Rinty Monaghan with a statue that will be in the centre of Belfast forever and ever, but we also celebrated John Colwell in Dunville Park and we also celebrated all the boxers from the Shankill in Woodfield Park. Eamon led on that. His uncle Tommy had approached him and says, you know, I think it was his dad wish he wanted to see his brother. Rindy Monaghan celebrated. My goodness, Eamon did bring that forward and we did get a son of this city honoured forever and ever. Today we're here to honour another yeah, here. of Eamon was born on the 4th of January 1966. Tom Jones was number one in the charts with the green green grass at home. It could only get better, Eamon, couldn't it? Eamon's book documents the 25 years of Ardoy from the period 1969 to 1994, a very difficult period for this area. The things that Eamon has seen and everybody who lived in this area, what they went through is documented in this book. I think health and safety wouldn't allow children to be brought up in conditions like that. But it's all in this book. Everything that happened on the streets that Eamon witnessed, and also his great boxing career. And he doesn't really get so much of the thanks and gratitude he should get for what he did. His pin pinnacle, as I would call it, was live on BBC One in 1985 when he knocked out to the car crook in the final of the AVAs. That was big. Harry Carpenter was um, commentating. It was, he was a British champion from here. A British champion. I think some of the fight may be shown. And I'll tell you what, it comes with a warning. Please, this was brutal. But Eamon, my goodness, some bloody shot you hit him with. He always said, his father said, when somebody's coming into you, shoot through the punch short, it's the hardest one. And my goodness, you will see that today. But look, I'm not the star of the show. His name's Eamon, he's not too far away. I'm going to leave you with a quote, Eamon. And it's from John Keats, the famous poet. And he said, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a thing of beauty and a joy forever. Eamon, say a few words. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, this is the moment that has arrived. I've been dreading this. Uh, terrified. I'm not used to public squeaking and mispronouncing a lot of my words. I mean, mispronouncing a lot of my words. Uh, very nervous. I'm just going to read this from. Put my glasses on. About eight years ago, I started to write a few stories for a local magazine, Horizon. Then I fell in love with writing, and I found it very comforting at a difficult time in my life. Then I decided to write about my dad and growing up in Ardoin. That's how the book came about. I just kept adding to these stories, and I shared my stories with a few friends, and they encouraged me to keep going. Initially, I was writing the stories on a notebook, and then I went up the Ardoin Library, and that was where I had the pleasure of meeting Trevor Gordon, who was in charge of the library. And that's when I typed it out on the computer, and Trevor saved it for me. Then I really started to get into it, and I would go up from time to time and add to my story. Just as I was about to look for a publisher, a book came out about our drawings here on McGee. This was a big setback for me, as I knew it would be silly to release a book about a boxer from our drawing called Eamon, when there already was a book out about a boxer from our drawing called Eamon. I put my book on hold for a few years and wasn't even sure if I wanted to carry on. But Trevor and all the staff at Ardoin Library were very encouraging and I eventually came back to it. I added a few more stories, made a few changes and Trevor sent the first three chapters to publishers. We got a good response and quite a few wanted to publish my book. A guy around my age with a dairy accident rang me one day and he was from Morton Place in Dublin. We spoke for over 20 minutes and he told me my upbringing was very similar to his. And that reading the first three chapters of the book brought it all back to him, and he loved it. 
He said that he couldn't wait to read the rest of the book, whatever publisher I went with. That really boosted my confidence in the book. And it was down to him that I went before them. I can't even remember his name now. I also want to thank Dr. Anthony McEwen for his help with spelling, grammar, and putting the stories together in a coherent manner. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, I also want to thank Pierre McGee for his help and support, Jimmy and Tony McNulty, Barry Flynn and Karen Crossan. Uh, thank you also to everyone who bought a copy of the book. Uh, I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank my manager, Mr. Eastwood, my coach, Bobby McAllister, my sparring partners. I want to just get on my body with uh, There's a wee bit of... Uh, a wee bit of David Brandt in me. I suppose, you know, David Brandt, the character, Ricky Gervais, there in the office. Take my glasses off, uh, But that's not such a bad thing. It wouldn't be bad if there was a wee bit of David Brandt in all of us. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Thank you. So as you can see, uh, we've had an absolutely fantastic day here so far. Uh, quite a celebration going on here in the Problem Star Club. It's absolutely fantastic to see so many people out supporting uh, today's event. Uh, I'm going to have a chat here with some of the uh, former boxers who took uh, time out and uh, arrived here today to have a bit of fun and a bit of crack and enjoy a sandwich and a cup of tea and purchase a book of uh, Eamon's, uh, Eamon McCauley's new uh, life story, which was brought out there the other day and the lunch here today. Uh, absolutely fantastic to see so many people out and about. It's called Fighting for Peace. And, uh, I'm here with a handful of other uh, former boxers who know him and, and have also sparred with him and in the ring, so it's going to be nice to hear what they have to say. And here's a couple of them here. Yeah, so as I say, I'm here with uh, some of the celebrities from today that's here to enjoy an absolutely fantastic day. I've got Jim Rock with me here. Jim, this has been a great uh, momentous moment here for Eamon McCauley. Jim, obviously, you were a, a professional boxer yourself and an amateur obviously going through. But Eamon McCauley there, what a character. Ah, he's a great, great fella. Really, real encyclopedia of boxing knows everything about it. I call him the Irish Bert Sugar. I'd call him the Irish Jimmy McGee. Um, look, he's very knowledgeable, knows his boxing inside out, um, comes from a great boxing family, and um, it's just great to come over here and let me support today for his book launch. It's absolutely fantastic to see such a guy from his area who's done so much for his area, promoting it in a positive manner uh, to be bringing this book out. And as you can see, the, the people that are here today, uh, it's just a fantastic event, Jim, isn't it? You know, it's great, to, it's great to see boxing really getting back on the map again post-COVID. Oh, yeah, it is. It's great to see it getting back. And, and I always say that, like, boxers usually always come from lower to middle class areas as opposed to, let's say, whether you have your footballers or rugby players from middle to... to high class areas you know what I mean so I always think the boxers they put a little bit more into their into their areas they never forget where they're from and you can see from the turnout here today there's plenty of people who respect them plenty of people come to support them and there's people here from every night in the woods in Belfast and yourself not even from Belfast from down south you know so well I drove up today I drove 130 miles today just to come up for this book launch and I'll drive back down but uh, you know Belfast I box in Belfast here but I have a special bond with Belfast so I'd always want to support the Belfast boxers because uh, as I always say if it wasn't for Belfast I wouldn't have been a professional fighter Jim Webb So yeah, I'm here with another uh, another absolute legend of Belfast boxing, and uh, you know these guys all stick together. And today it's just as proof of what it all means and what boxing has done for working class people in Belfast and Belfast City and Ulster and Ireland uh, all all around. I'm here with John Lowe, John, a former uh, a former champion yourself, John. It's a great event here today for Eamon McCauley. Your experience as Eamon McCauley over the years, John. Can you tell me some of your stories? Well, me and Eamon go back over 30 years ago. <laughs> swear it's a long time. So I boxed for at Ledley Hall, he boxed for Sacred Heart. And we used to have inter competitions and that used to come over a box over in the East. We had shows in the Welders Club, the Corn Club, Park Avenue. And him was a he boxed a couple of boys out of our boxing club back then. That's where I got to know him and then whatever turned professional, he was in Barney Eastwood's gym, which is another where I turned after the 88 Olympics. You know, your own, your own career, John, or it was absolutely glittering. You know, you had a massive career. Eamon there maybe, maybe maybe just didn't travel as far on, you know, and of course he regrets it. But, you know, 
to bring a book out and to, be, to bring it out within your own community and involve your own community efforts within it, you know, it really is a success story in its own right. Well, I think with a lot of the boxers, you'll find that their, their feet never leave the ground. A humble crowd, John. A great humble crowd of guys. You know, John's just saying there, and I must actually say to you viewers out there, and the rugby and boxing really is the only two things that we can combine that everybody can be part of. Uh, on the island of Ireland, uh, Northern Ireland, all that there, John, you know. And boxing really is something that stands, the, the stability that you guys have is friendships built for years. Well, it's, it, it is for years, because I had some sets over 30 years ago. That, uh, I've, uh, again, some of the old trainers that I knew sweet back then still still, still about. It's, it's, it's nice to see that Eamon's getting the support of everybody. Yeah, there's absolutely no doubt about it. And it's a fantastic day for uh, Eamon. And it's a great day for yourselves and all the other guys who are here. I'm going to have a word, obviously, with uh, Eamon Lochran there and Big Neil Sinclair. But at the moment in time, this is John Lowe here. And uh, just with jo John Lowe and uh, just with John here, you know, absolute legend. Yeah, so we're here again with uh, Eamon Lochran here, uh, Ballymena's uh, WBO uh, five-time defending world welterweight champion from 1993 to 1996. Eamon, your experiences with Eamon McCauley, first of all, this is a fantastic event and a great day, isn't it? It's absolutely fantastic, isn't it? Great turnout, Sherman, so it's lovely to see and run into ex-boxers, Eamon McCauley, Neil Sinclair, uh, Jim Rock and guys like that, yeah, Paul McCulloch, guys, just come back over the wee stories again, but I'm looking forward to reading this book, so I'm, you know... It's been uh, it's one of one of them. It's, there's nobody probably uh, I know of, and I'm sure you're the same. That knows boxing more than him, Macaulay. I was saying to wee bit of Paddy Graham there earlier on. There, he's the Irish Bert Sugar. I would have to agree with you there. So would I. Bert Sugar, Bert Sugar, Bert Sugar for all you viewers out there. It's the most. Uh, he must be the smartest boxer man in history, isn't he? He knows his stuff, so Well, he's the, the Irish Bert Sugar, isn't he? And, and I mean, sometimes we think we know, and he corrects us to it. Does and if, you I've know, had enough of him correct uh, me. He's corrected you a few times, Sherman. On me too, so has as far as the history. He actually knows every guy that he's boxed, amateur and professional. Ian McCauley does. And I think myself, like, I couldn't remember ten guys that I've boxed, so I couldn't, you know, so he's got a great memory. One thing you would remember is that day down in Castle Street, whenever you first come up into Castle Street in Belfast, mm -hmm. to the Barney uh, Eastwood stable, and you sparred him, and he was, he was a challenger for a British title and stuff at the time. Yeah, so, what sort of experience did you gain from the likes of Gimme? Well, what, what, what did that offer you? He would have been four or five years older than me, or three or four years older than me, and he had just won the ABAs. He was a massive name, as Barney Eastwood had made it, made it clear that he was his big man, or he was his main man at that time. And uh, I had a young boy, I was 17, 18 years of age, coming up anti spar with this great guy that knocked everybody out in ABAs. And as you can see in the, the spars, they were nip and tuck the whole way there, there, was, there, there was no letting up Eamon you know the two years were getting into each other you know but but obviously but back, back to uh, Eamon McCauley here you know I, I, I can't reiterate how great it is to be here just to be to be, to be doing this bit of recording here with some of the, the famous boxing names which are friends of Eamon McCauley Eamon McCauley what is he what, what does he mean to you he's a, he's a great fella and a friend over the, over the years and now at the end of his career's over same as my career's over he's also a man of faith so he has Likes his prayers, so it does, and uh, it's just a, just a, a genuinely lovely guy, so he is, a uh, sincere guy, family man, so he is, he looks after his kids and his, his wife and things out there, so he's a lovely guy, and I just class him as a good friend, so what, over the years, that's why I'm here today, supporting his book, so it is, you know, giving that wee push. As I say, we can't re we can't reiterate how much it's great. It's been so great to be invited up here to be part of this here. You know, I think I speak on behalf of Eamon and most of the other guys here that I'll be looking forward to having a chat with Neil Sinclair and guys like that. You know, it really is a momentous event, Eamon. We're just proud to be here, aren't we? Yes, I because I mean, the book's good it's about Eamon, obviously, but there's so much more in it. I, I know a lot of things about him and his boxing career and things like that, the ABAs that he won. But there's also stories in it. About You're bringing in the social life there, Eamon, aren't you? Eamon Monarch and, and stuff like that there, and his and his own and his own life, the ups and the downs of a boxer's career, and that's what it is, isn't it? You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm looking forward to his book, so you know, getting a read on it. You know, I think it'll be a great book. Eamon, really. there must be 300 people in here, and I think they're all looking forward to getting the book as well. You know, and uh, listen, you heard it from the champ. Yeah, so here again with uh, another uh, of our Downs' most famous sons, uh, Jody Gormley, Cliftonville Starlight. Everybody knows Joe the goal. Jody, Eamon McCauley, it's a fantastic day. Uh, your experience with Eamon, what a guy. Oh, no, he's uh, an incredible guy, and I've known him throughout the years, you know. Um, growing up in Ardoin, I always heard of Eamon McCauley being a, 
one of the best boxers about and um, it's great to know him and as a Clinville fan it's even better to know um, for the years I've done uh, interviews with him and what a guy he is uh, he's amazing he is, he's an absolute legend, there's no doubt about it. Jody, the book, it's not just about boxing, about, it's about his life uh, growing up in this area, a very, very hard hit area during the troubles, which we're all very aware of, you know. So for a man to, to, grow, out, to, you know, to grow through that area and to go into the heat of the cauldron in Wembley, in the middle of London, as a lonely Irish lad, win a British title, bring it back to his people, that's a massive achievement for a guy there, you know. Yeah, no, it's incredible. Um to go out there and win, win the titles and stuff um, he's an amazing man listen um, Ardoin is a small place with uh, a lot of talented people and Eamon McCauley he was uh, what, top, top of the list I'd say um, growing up knowing, knowing all of them boxing and stuff um, he's an amazing guy there's absolutely no doubt about it I think I think it's very fair to say to you for yours out here uh, Jody I'm sure you would agree Ardoin Eamon is Ardoin through and through and he's for his own community and he worked for his own community and the voluntary work he does there and the door work he does he's a very influential man to people oh yeah no you without know, a doubt passing uh, on the positive vibe and yeah, all yeah you know. no without a doubt and you need people like Eamon in, the, yeah. in Ardoin to know um, people will say a lot of bad things about Ardoin and Eamon will tell you it's an amazing place I'm from Ardoin myself I love it I love the people in it and Eamon is at the, at the pinnacle of it uh, he has created so much for the community and his boxing brings a lot of you know it's amazing it is like there's no words you can describe what he does for the community and I would imagine Jody that in this book there's going to be heartfelt feelings emotions passions and most importantly human thrust from him not only about the surrounding area but about his challenges in life yeah um, and we all have challenges Jody you know the mental yeah. wellness no 100% and it's I'm not really a big reader but I'll definitely read this book and I, will, I want to see what what way he grew up and stuff through the troubles because I'm, I'm sure his experiences and my experiences are a lot different and I would love to read this book and uh, see what it's like and uh, just to see what the guy's like himself I know him as a person but I would love to read it about his, his, his past life and uh, times now you know Joe the goal OK, so uh, here with uh, another of uh, one of Ulster's uh, most famous boxing sons, Big Neil Sinclair. Neil Silky, uh, Eamon McCauley. Give us something on Eamon McCauley. What a man. Oh, yes. I, I must have sparred about 100 rounds with him in, in uh, the Holy Family. I was boxing out of the Holy Family as an amateur. And uh, it was probably about 17, 18. And we sparred. And it was, I was, you know, Jerry would have pulled me out after a few rounds. But Eamon was just about to, to get into his stride, being a professional boxer. And I... But the last, the last time I sparred him, and he hit me a big right hand straight on the nose and the blood, and that was the end of the spar. I never sparred again. But I, so when people talk about him being a puncher, or, or people talk about me being a puncher, I had first-hand experience. I, I know what he, I know it, that he could punch. But I wasn't watching it. I wasn't watching him knocking out a card crook or anything like that. It was, it was first-hand experience. So people say. You know, Eamon could punch me, you know, with the right hand. He says, I oh, know, well, if I did, he... <laughs> You're on the other end of it. <laughs> I was on the receiving end, you know, and I, I've did that to the other people, but I, 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 it's, also been, it's also been done to me, so, so I know... The double-sided coin. It is, it is. You've you got you to gotta be able to take it as, as well as give it, and uh, that was a learning curve for me, you know, just train, train him with a professional and sparring a professional. And then years later, we've, we've hooked up, we've, we've went out and... We've went out and met up for coffees and stuff, so I've got to know. I got to know him later on in the later years, and you know, and he's a gentleman, as you know, and, and I'm delighted that his book's doing so well. And, 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 and there's a great crowd here today. There's been a great. Crowd. It really has been good, and some big names like yourself and Eamon oh, Locker, yeah. and Locker, you know, and, and it would, really is. And it would be, and it would be a success. Actually, when I was going up to get the books, Karen was saying the books were all sold out, so I gave me a dress and paid the money for three books and. And then she came up to me later and says, no, that I've got I've got three books, so that's good. I can go home now and start reading the book. And the other two books are for friends of mine. So I'm sure Neil, I'm sure that in the book there's going to be some real good interest in reading. You know, because as I've said to other people there, and big Judy Gormley was on talking there, and uh, all, uh, some of the other uh, famous people there. The situation is, it's not just about boxing, it's no. about his life, it's about mindfulness and all. You know, so it really is going to be quite an interesting yes. reading, you know, and I'm it sure is. you would agree there. It is, I mean, every, every, everybody's got a warts and all story, and, and Eamon's, if I was, I mean, I've got high, I've had highs, and I've got lows, and, and I'm sure Eamon's had highs and he's had lows, and, and it's good that he, he put that to paper now, he can, he can write down his experiences, and I know Eamon's a good storyteller, and he can talk, and, 
and he, he loves the big words and that and so it'll be articulate and it'll be an articulate read and, and I'm looking forward to, to going home and starting to read it so uh, I'm just glad that there's not so many people that I know are here and it's and it's not a funeral, so so I'm, I'm delighted. I'm delighted for him, and he deserves it. You know, him and McGee had a book a few years ago, which was a success. That's right, that's and, I, right. and I hope this is equally successful. You know. So. What about yourself? Would you would you, would you go down that line, Neil, and tell your story, your, your life story, your boxing story, or something? Maybe yes. you know. You know, I think I think yes. it's a great way to deal with yes. things like that there. Do you yes, know? Do you not encourage that? I mean, I've got I mean, I've got a story to tell. Everybody's yeah, got a story I, I, to tell. You know, we were talking about ups and downs. I could, Talk about, you know, my, 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 fight, my, my big wins in the ring, amateur and pro, and then I, I could talk about mental illness as well. Yeah. As, 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 as seems the whole world could talk about it now. Oh, yeah, the whole yeah. world's mentally ill. And we're in an op- a more open world now through the social media, yes, and it gives it that is, chance to it raise not, that issue. It's not as big a stigma, you know, people can talk about it, even, even you know, people that are perceived as, as big hard men, and all that. I'm not putting myself in that bracket, but. But people like that, rugby players and footballers, you know, they're coming out now and they can speak about their experiences. And that's good for people coming yeah, up that have problems. Yeah. It, yeah. People, I to- yeah, totally under, yes, I totally agree myself. Yes, there, yeah. yes, people, and you're helping somebody, even if you're just helping one person, it, it's worth it. So you never know. Maybe, maybe Eamon will be at my book launch one day, you know, and I'll be writing out a. A copy for him, but you know, and you know that if you ever need any coverage on it, just to come and give me a shout, you know. Well, absolutely. Big silky, you know. But uh, you know, thanks for being here today. Uh, I really, really enjoyed chatting to all the guys, and thank you for giving me some of your time. You're a gentleman, okay? Big Neil, big silky, huh? What a guy. So I'm here uh, eventually. Uh, I was able to uh, push everyone else out of the road, and uh, obviously try my best to get a chat with uh, the man of the day here, Mr. Eamon McCauley. Uh, Eamon, fighting for peace. What a name for a book for a man coming from uh, Belfast, from this area here, uh, through your lifetime and going to uh, England, winning a British title, bringing it back home, uh, your life struggles, your happiness, your downs, your ups, your overs, your father, and all that there is to take to do with everything. This is, this is a remarkable day. How do you feel today? I can't take the credit for the title, unfortunately. I was a friend, Anthony McKeown, who came up with that title. Right, and right, I liked right. it straight away. It sounds just... It sounded good, I, th- yeah. I think it covers everything, Eamon. I was even doing the door. It's always been spelling some heart in my life. You know, I've always been fighting in the ring and outside the ring. You know, uh, doing the door for over 30 yeah. years. And, yep. And my dad's history, you know. Aye. Uh, yeah. So, do you think, Eamon, that, 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 that history there coming from your father, from, from the fighting point of view, do you think that, that has served you stand, whenever you went into the ring? You were, I, I, my father's this, and I hate to maintain this uh, stability, the, the, the attitude, the winning attitude, in, in the ring now, in the ring. Oh, yeah, well, it was well ingrained in the family, boxing uh, and fighting. I mean, my father's father, my grandad, Harry McCauley, was a professional pugilist. He right. was Northern Ireland champion, which he won over 15 rounds against Billy Donnelly. So and he had four great fights with Jim McCann, a uh, great fighter my granda was. So that was my dad's father. His mother was Randy Monaghan's oldest sibling. So it was in both sides of the family. Uh, very and much horse, so. In horse racing terms, we would have been thoroughbreds. It's in the breeding, it's in the breeding. So yes, I, I just loved the fight, loved every minute of it. My, my career was short and explosive, but I loved every minute of it. You would do it all over again? Oh, with a heart and a half. <laughs> and if only you could get half the chance here. Oh, I know, I know. You know, I, I became vegan, I became vegetarian, and I lost my strength, I lost my, my power, and then I lost my confidence. I had in a sense to work out. I wasn't replacing, uh, I mean, where was I getting uh, calcium and iron and protein from? I really you know? understand so you and I. I it's a massive thing on today. All well, 30 years ago, you know. I was doing that 30 years ago. I was on right. a bit of a one-man crusade coming from Ardoin. So nobody to give me help uh, or educate and me there on was, there, there was no educational promotions no, uh, even no. there, even for that, no, for that, no. at that stage, no, yeah. you know. If I could do it all again, I would still be strong, I would still be healthy, and I would still be a vegetarian and vegan. And you've gone right through another 10 or 15 years. So Eamon, I'm still an athlete today. I still yeah, oh, I'm still I know, strong I now because uh, subsidies and I get my nutrients and I know how to get calcium and iron and protein. So uh, just a pity all them years ago. That's what happened in my boxing career. And even it is what it is and it was what it was. It is what it is. And the 10 wonderful years, I uh, travelled the world, met some great people like Eamon Lachlan, uh, Barry McGuigan, uh, you know, sparred world champions in Panama and Colombia, Los Angeles. I mean, Israel had a great, great boxing career. People can only dream of things like that there. Eamon, fighting for peace then, obviously, it involves quite a lot of personal stuff, you know. Yeah. And 
How did you get that out, Eamon? Was it something you had to do? Was this something you had to do? Did you have to get rid of something? Or did you have to give it to your community? Did you? No, well, God came into my life. I, I, I let God was knocking on the door for years, but I wasn't letting him in. But I've done a thing called Curcio, which, uh, which blew me away. It's a three-day walk, a spiritual walk, not a physical walk with Christ. And uh, that absolutely blew me away. And uh, that was 20-odd years ago, and I'm still involved with Curcio today. Uh, so that would have, that's what it was, Chase, letting God in, because he was knocking on the door, I just wasn't opening the door for him, because God never forces. But I, I've got God in my life now, I've got inner peace, uh, and I've got my faith, and that's everything to me. That is everything to me. And everything, any problems, anything, God, you know, I've talked to God about it. Unbelievable, Raymond. Or Eamon, absolutely yeah. inspirational. And you know our good friend, Eamon Lachlan, is very, very yeah, Christian too, well, you know. Very well, very well, very well, indeed. He speaks extremely highly of you from that perspective. Well, me and, uh, me and Eamon carried the banner one yeah, day, yeah, 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 in yeah, the yeah. city centre. Yeah, you did indeed. You We're did. both in and your faith for the, the, the Sunday word covered, the, sun, the, the, Sunday word, the, uh, the Irish news covered that there, because that was a massive story. Two former yeah. fighters yeah. now fighting for the children. right for the right yeah. of, of, of the born child. Absolutely, you know? yes. Well, Eamon, the crowd that was here earlier on, there must have been three or 400 people in here. It was absolutely fantastic. How did you, you were mentioning there 10 minutes ago that there was very little people about you and all of a sudden half the town walked in. So know. how does it feel the end of the day, Eamon? How, does, how is this one down for you? They must have been all watching the Celtic match because when that finished, I mean, they all come in their drones. Uh, well, they probably I were. Yeah, well, they probably were. I'm a party thistle fan, by the way. So listen, don't be starting now, Eamon. Come on. You hear me up here in the wrong place. But... Uh, I think, Eamon, you know, like I think it's been a, a momentous moment and a, gr- a great day, and it's, yes. a, it's been a, moment, a momentous moment for you. I've really enjoyed writing the book. I've really enjoyed everything about it. It's just everything's went so well. I'm touched, if not deeply moved, by the response. I know the Ardoin people would have come out in numbers, and I'm very, very proud to say I'm from Ardoin. Yeah. And it's the book's dedicated to the people of Ardoin who have suffered so greatly. So, but I enjoyed every minute of writing the book. I enjoyed writing stories about Mata, and maybe hopefully one day there would be a story, a book about Mata, because you know the things he's come through. Kind of tales. You could write ten I, books. I, I, I totally understand. There's uh-huh. absolutely no doubt about yeah. it. You know, I, I think you know, like I'm, I'm not stuck for words, but I'm just in the presence of a great man here. You know, uh, Eamon, I want to say thanks for inviting me it's up. I want to say thanks for, for inviting me up. Yeah. You, as I've told you before, you were one of my main inspirations for getting the microphone and going out and doing bits and bobs, because I always watched all your stuff. It was actually my best friend, Eamon Lachlan, that put me on to you. And then I looked at all your stuff, and I looked at all the stuff with Jerry Hamill, and all the old great names, Paddy yeah, Graham, and yeah. all the boys. Tony Magan, and, and, and I, I told him, and all the boys in Palomina. Of course, they're all your own boys from your own city here of yeah, Belfast, and, yeah. and further afield. And I just as me said, you know, I'd love to be able to do that there. And, and, and here I am now interviewing Eamon, you know, so... And you're inspiring, you're inspiring me, and you're inspiring others. I mean, you know, I, I brag about you all the time, sure. I really do. I, I love, I love talk, telling people about you. I love telling people about Eamon Lachlan. I love it. It's a very uplifting, uh, inspiring story. You know, so it doesn't matter where you were or where you came from. It's what you are now that's important. Uh, and you're what's, the old, what's the old box and saying, Eamon? What's the old box and saying? It's not about how many times you're knocked down. Uh, it's about how many times you keep uh, bouncing up. Uh, up uh, yes, that's, that's true. Okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, honest to goodness, uh, up in the Crumlin Star here, uh, the Crumlin Star Club with Mr. Eamon McCauley at his book lunch. I'm honoured, and uh, we, we're all honoured today to pay homies to such a guy. Eamon, give me five. Thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely brilliant. Yes, thank you.